Special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Secure Tool for here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and building the T-80 BVM. The T-80 is a main battle tank that was designed for the former Soviet Union and also manufactured in Russia. The T-80 is based off the T-64 while incorporating features of the later T-72 when it entered service in 1976. It was the second MBT in the world to be equipped with a gas turbine engine after the Swedish STRV-103 and the first to use it as a primary propulsion system. The T-80U was last produced in 2001 in a factory in Omsk, Russia. The Ukrainian T-80UD diesel engine variant continued to be produced in Ukraine. The T-80 and its variants are in service in Belarus, Cyprus, Egypt, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, Russia, South Korea, and Ukraine. The chief designer of the T-80 was the Soviet engineer Nikolai Popov. The version we have in front of us is the most modern for, uh, creation of the T-80. Uh, basically just included uh, various improvements to the vehicle overall, as well as the addition of a new and uh, stronger 125 millimeter gun. So yeah, this right here is the most modern variant of the T-80 and one that is currently basically being fielded by the Russian military and especially in, um, you know, ongoing conflicts such as the war in Ukraine that is currently happening. Um, so really uh, interesting tank here and um, just a huge development of the T-80. I'm pretty sure we've done a T-80 or one of the early variants of it. And you'll definitely see a huge change in terms of design from the original T-80 to that of this uh, super modernized version. But uh, basically just, you know, trying to keep the tank uh, up to date and a combat uh, or a combat effective uh, tank to say the very least. Uh, before we go ahead and jump into this tutorial though, I do want to go ahead and give special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and play the small amount to the channel every month, and in doing so, earn a vehicle request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really, really appreciated, so definitely feel free to check it out. Again, link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the T-80 BVM. So again, to start with, we have our main gun here, the 125mm gun. Um, we then have the front armor here, which is a bit different compared to the other T-80s. It's kind of not a continuous slope. It's uh, got some extra weird armor put on it. It has some interesting shape to it, so it's a little bit different there than some of the other T-80 uh, variants and kind of more unique. Um, of course, we have this reactive armor that's basically around the turret, which is very standardized for most of the newer, um, or I would say the more recent upgrades to the um, late Cold War uh, Soviet tanks that they are, or Russian tanks that they are currently uh, upgrading. Uh, we have smoke grenade dispensers here on the sides. We then have the uh, mounted Dudishka machine gun up here on top. And we have the optics and stuff like that, which were some new add-ons to the uh, gunner's position to the side here. Uh, on the back we have obviously just a bunch of equipment mounted onto the tank, nothing too spectacular in terms of that, but uh, again just more equipment and just kind of a different um, layout it appears than previous versions. Like most of the other main battle tanks from Russia during this time period, it's got the uh, fuel tanks here on the outside, um, and then we have the unditching log here on the bottom, um, and then we have the little, uh, just, the, just the radiator exhaust or some vents on the back there. Uh, overall really nice looking build and we'll make an awesome addition to any of your worlds if you're looking to build a nice kind of I would say very modern um, Russian tank. Uh, this tank obviously being used in ongoing conflicts and um, definitely, uh, definitely a formidable tank to say the very least. Anyways though without uh, further ado let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into uh, our tutorial. We're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down two narrow brick slabs like this and then two narrow brick top slabs coming off those slabs toward the direction you want the front of the tank. We're going to have our tank face that way, so we're going to place our narrow brick top slabs that way. We're going to go then place down two black shulker boxes back to back like so, followed by two polished black stone stairs, an air two right behind those, again two black shulker boxes, an air two sets of two of stairs, another uh, row of two black shulker boxes, and again, two polished blocks and stairs, another row like that going across. We're going to go ahead and place down two narrow brick slabs and two narrow brick top slabs across like that. 
After that is all done there, we're going to go ahead and place down an item frame on each one of these shulker boxes, as well as a green stained glass pane in um, those item frames. So just like that. And then a dark liquid button on the shulker boxes as well. Now just a side note that those item frames and buttons will only be able to be placed on Java. You'll have to pick one or the other um, if you're on a different version. If you're on a different version of Minecraft other than Java, I would recommend probably doing the item frames and disregarding the buttons. The buttons are a nice bit of detail, but the um, item frames there are going to be the best bet to go with if you are not able to place down a button and item frame in the same block space. Anyways though, let's continue on. We're going to go then take our dark oak wood stairs, we're going to place down our row of three, coming off this narrow, these two narrow brick top slabs here on the front side, and then we're going to go ahead and place down gray banners across like so. We then want to take our top slabs, we're going to place down another row of three, followed by a second, third, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and we're going to go ahead and stop at eleven. Rows of three going back. So basically this last row of two, or this row of two of brick slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down a top slab there in the center. And then to the sides here of this slab here, we're going to place down a zombie head. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same track design, just over here to the air side. So again, basically the same exact thing. Uh, the zombie head also on the side here. And we're going to go ahead and then basically take our tracks and do that same design going forward. So I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit quicker as I've already kind of covered the other side um, and how that's constructed, but it's the same thing on both sides. So if you need to, you can refer to the air side um, or pause the video, slow it down, whatever works best for you guys. But yeah, that right there is just going to set up our uh, basic road wheel design there. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our narrow brick slabs, two, two, our item frames on the sides here, and then green stained glass paints in those item frames and dark oak buttons again for us Java players. After we have that done though, we're going to go ahead and then go to the very back, we're going to take our spruce wood trap doors and we're just going to place down a row of seven spruce wood trap doors going all the way across the rear here like so. And with that all complete, that right there is going to basically wrap up everything we have there for uh, layer one, uh, well, for the main structure. And one thing I do want to cover also is the addition of these banners here, which are going to be used for the road wheels. Now these banners are really simple to make and I'm not going to go ahead and go into a loom and show you how to make them because they're really so simple. All you have is two banners here, and they're, one's going to be split in half with green on the right side, and the other's going to be split in half with green on the left side. And obviously the sides opposite from the green will be black, so look like that. Then we want to place down our black horizontal line right across the center, and you'll get two banners that look like this. These banners are placed very simply on the side of the polished black stone stairs with the green portion facing toward each other. And what it does is kind of help shows our road wheels while also showing the space in between said wheels. Um, so the same thing here will be done on both sides for our polished blackstone stairs and it really creates kind of a nice design there for the wheel wheels and really makes them look uh, spaced down properly laid out. Anyways though that is right, going to conclude everything we have there for the road wheels and let's move on to our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer we have layer number two. For layer two to start with we're going to place down two narrow brick walls on top of these two slabs here and then we're going to place down dark oak wood signs on the sides here of these walls. So it's just like this going forward. After we have that done we're going to go ahead and place down a row three of dark prism rain slabs, a, another slab here in the center, or sorry, rather sorry a full block in the center and then a lectern like this to both sides. Now after we have that done we're going to take our green terracotta, we're going to place down two blocks out to the sides like so, and then a green stained glass pane coming off this green terracotta block, and then one more forward to connect up to that narrow brick wall. So it should look like this here for the front so far. We're going to go ahead and then take our green terracotta, and we're just going to place down a row of seven that's going to go all the way across the width here of the tank. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing quite a few times building back the vehicle. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're going to go, then go to ten. So you're going to have ten more rows, or ten rows of seven going away across. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then take our uh, black concrete. We're going to place down one, two, one, two, and then we're going to place down a row of three of green terracotta to fill that middle space in like so. We're going to go ahead and take our spruce wood slabs, we're going to place down one, two, coming off each of these black concrete blocks. An item frame on the inside slabs here, and then around the outside slabs we're just going to go ahead and take our spruce wood uh, signs, and we're just going to go ahead and wrap them around 
like so. We're also going to place down a dark oakwood sign on the side here of this black concrete block on both sides. We then want to go ahead and go to the item frames. Inside those item frames, we're going to place down a trip bar hook, rotate them so that the hook is facing downwards. And after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a polished black stone stair to both sides like that, a black concrete block here in the center. That is going to be followed up with a ladder coming off the block and then a dark oakwood sign on the sides here of these stairs. And that right there is going to form up the back there of the tank. Now for the siding, we're going to go ahead and go back from these green stained glass panes we started on the front here. We're going to go back one, two, and three more panes. Same thing over here, one, two, three. We're going to go ahead and then take our dark oak with trap doors and we're going to place them all around, all on the side here of the remaining green terracotta blocks and same thing will be done over here as well. And again, we'll make sure that these are positioned closed. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number uh, two. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer here, we have layer number three. For layer three, we start off with, we're going to place down green carpet on top of these narrow brick uh, walls there, then two spruce wood trap doors like this going back. Make sure that they are facing the same direction as it will just kind of look a little bit more cleaner overall. We're going to go and then grab ourselves some daylight detectors, and we're going to place down two daylight detectors like this to both sides. Make sure that these trap doors do stay closed, so you may have to manually close them yourself. We're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater like this to both sides, and you may have to mess with this a little bit, but if you position the redstone repeater a little bit uh, differently, so if you kind of look toward the side you want to place it and then place it like this, it will not activate and glow. So uh, just make sure you do that, and then we're going to separate the notches apart from each other like so. We then want to place down a spruce wood slab here in the middle, followed by an item frame, and then a black bed rotated sideways in that item frame. If you're on Java, we'll also go ahead and go the extra extent of putting a spruce wood sign on the side of that slab. Again, Java players will be able to place down an item frame and sign in the same block space. If you are on a different version, you will not be able to do that. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, in addition, we will replace this green terracotta block here with some of this um, dark prismarine. And I'm going to go ahead and make one quick change here. I'm going to actually swap out this uh, spot right here for a dark prismarine stair instead. Um, so it's going to look something like that there for the front. And Actually, I can make this one step better here. Uh, for Java players, we can go ahead and use a piston uh, right here. So you can either use the dark prismarine stair or the piston. Um, and if you are a Java player, we'll type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. Press enter, we'll get this debug stick, and we can go ahead and then left click the piston until we get selected extended false pop up. By right clicking it, it'll get rid of that top portion and that right there will finish that off in the front. So uh, the piston there is going to be the best bet. Um, you can also use the end portal frame. Um, so this is also an option to use as well, uh, though preferably I don't really like the uh, look of it too much, but again, you could use the end portal frame also in place of that daylight detect or that um, piston there. So a uh, few little options there for you guys to paint on your version. We're going to go ahead and go back from this with uh, some dark oakwood slabs. So dark oakwood slab to both sides here. And then a row of three green terracotta right behind those slabs. After we have that done, we're going to take our spruce wood slabs, or rather our daylight detectors. We're going to place down two out to the sides here. And we're going to go ahead and place down two spruce wood slabs also to the sides. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of green terracotta across. And then a spruce wood slab again to both sides. We're going to go ahead and then place down another row of green terracotta going across. That's going to be a row of five, and then a third row of five going across as well. Uh, we're going to go and then place down our spruce wood slabs on the side of those rows. Now, on these last uh, two rows we just placed, we're also going to go ahead and place down some spruce wood signs on the side of the slabs. So like that. And then after we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some green beds, and we're going to place down one and two green beds like so, and same thing over here, one and two like that along the side here. We'll also be taking our spruce wood signs and by crouching in the, the air, so shift uh, shift crouching, we're going to go ahead and place down spruce wood signs all the way along the side here of the beds. So just like this on both sides. So after we have those beds placed and all that, we're going to go ahead and then place down another row of five of green terracotta going across. We then want to place down a row of three that's going to go across the center here, followed by a zombie head here in the corners, like so. We're going to go and then start on the left side here, and we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some dark oakwood slabs. We're going to place down a dark oakwood slab here, and then four green terracotta blocks over to the right side. After that, we're going to place down a spruce wood slab here in the center, a dark oakwood slab to both sides, and then a zombie head here 
in the in that space there to the sides. We're gonna go ahead and place down another row three of dark oak wood slabs, a daylight detector again to both sides, and then a spruce wood slab going back from those beds. After that is all done, we're gonna go ahead and then take our green shulker boxes. We're gonna place down a row of two here, and then a, another row of two over here on this side. And we want the bottoms basically touching each other so they look just like that. Now around these uh, blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down dark oak wood buttons like so. And on the outsides here, we can also go ahead and grab an item frame and some green terracotta. And we're just going to go ahead and place down an item frame with a green terracotta block in it. And same thing can be done over here on this side as well, like that. After we have that all done there, the very center, we're just going to go ahead and take our daylight detectors and we're going to fill this in with a row of three across like so. After we have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number three. Again, taking a view from up above is what it should look like from the top down view. With that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stripped birch wood block on top of this block here and a smooth sandstone block going forward, or slab I should say. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six so far, and that's going to go ahead and go to seven and eight uh, dark oak wood slabs forward, followed by a polished blackstone slab on the very tip here. We're going to go ahead and go to the third and fourth slabs from the front here, and we're going to go ahead and place down dark oak wood slabs on the sides of those. So we're just going to count back from that polished blackstone, one, two, and near three and four. And we're just going to have the dark oak wood signs here on the sides. After that, we want to go ahead and then grab our dark oak wood trap doors, and we're just going to place them here on the bottom of these two slabs like that as well. Now, after that is all done, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves dark prismarine stairs. We're going to place down a dark prismarine stair on both sides of this sandstone slab. And we're going to follow it up with a dark prismarine block here going back on an angle there from those stairs and then zombie heads around the sides here of these two blocks like that and then we're also going to place down a dark prismarine stair here on both sides as well after uh, that is all done we're going to go ahead and then place down a piston like this in these sections here again an alternative to those pistons can be the end portal frames and then we're going to fill in the inside in here with one two three green terracotta blocks after that it's then going to be a row of five of green terracotta across Followed by a second row of five going all the way across like that. We're going to go ahead and then place down a polished blackstone stair. Come off the side of this row here. A wither skeleton skull going forward and then a wither skeleton skull on top of the stair. Same thing will be done over here as well. So just like that. After that's done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then take our green terracotta. We're going to place down another row of three across the center there. And we're going to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall in the corners there like so. We're also going to run a row of three of mossy cobblestone walls across this space here. After we have that done, we're going to place down a green shulker box to the right side here like so. And on the other side, we want to go and grab our stripped uh, birch wood. We're actually going to replace this wall right here with a stripped birch wood log and a second one going back like so. To the side here of those blocks, we're going to place down a green shulker box. We're going to follow this up with a dark prismarine slab here coming off this space and then a dark oak wood sign on the two sides here of the slab that are exposed so it's going to look like that after that is all done we're going to go ahead and then grab our dark prismarine we're going to place down two stairs again on this space here back to back and then to the sides here for java players we'll place down our pistons again alternative there is to use the end portal frames we're also going to place down dark oak wood signs there on the sides of those stairs we'll grab our debug stick again for java players and we'll just go ahead and right click those pistons or before we go ahead and do actually uh, we do want to go ahead and place down one dark oak wood fence gate in this space right here. So come off this wall, connecting to the piston, and then we'll activate our piston to reset them like so. And that right there is going to basically complete that. And we'll also go ahead and take these pistons right here and do the same thing. So we're just going to right-click them to set them down a little bit like that. And once we have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer 5. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our last final layers. So going ahead and moving into our last final layers here, we have layers 6 through 10. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and grabbing a dark oak wood trap door. And we're going to go ahead and place it on top of this block right here. We're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector behind it. Make sure you do close that trap door again if it does open. And then we're just going to place down a daylight detector to both sides of that um, slab. We then want to place down a dark prismarine slab here in the middle. And then we're going to place down one more slab back from it. 
In this space here, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood stair. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick. And we're going to place down a stair in this space here. Then we want to place down a spruce wood slab right behind this. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some zombie heads. We're going to place down a zombie head here at a slight angle. As well as right here. So it kind of creates a little bit of a round shape here for this little commander's cupola. Then once we get to this back portion, it's going to kind of again depend on what version you're on. So for Java players here, we're going to use a kind of cool technique here. And we're going to place down two blocks, um, basically, in f over the space. So we have this slab here, and this zombie head. We're going to leave a space between that slab, and we're going to place down two blocks here. We're going to place down our two levers, and we're going to then take our debug stick here, and we're going to go and left-click until we get selected facing. By crouching and then right-clicking, we can go ahead and rotate these um, levers so that they connect up to the slab and the zombie head. Again, this might uh, take a few more clicks, just depending on the way you have your tank oriented in your world. Um, for me, it was just one, but again, it might vary again, depending on, you know, what uh, orientation you have the tank. But we're going to place those instead. An alternative to this would be for um, players that do are not on Java, is I'd place down two dark oak fence gates like this and open them up forward. So, we have your two fence gates and you open them forward instead of these levers. Again, the levers are going to be the best uh, technique to use. After we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark oak fence post <coughs> right here. And if you do place the fence gates, I would recommend instead of the fence post to use a end rod instead. So you don't have that weird connecting up. So just to, you know, mention that um, also if you um, do use the uh, fence gates there. We're also going to place another fence gate here. And we're going to open this toward the side here like that. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a item frame coming off that fence gate. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And we're going to place it like this going forward. And then a snowball in the item frame. We then want to go ahead and place down a end rod, or we're going to leave that alone for right now because that will be the next layer. Uh, continuing on though, we're going to place down a uh, spruce wood slab in this section here, dark oak wood buttons on these two uh, strip birch wood, and in this space right here, we are going to go ahead and place down uh, a smoker. So it's going to be a smoker in this spot right here, so you have that little kind of like optics uh, facing forward. And then coming off that, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate, open it toward the smoker, an item frame on the side of the fence gate, and then a snowball in that item frame like that for a little light there. And once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and continue moving on up. So for the back here, on top of these levers, or the fence gates, we're going to place down a zombie head. That would be like this on both sides, and we're going to have the face facing toward the inside. So like that. And we then want to go ahead and grab a um, end rod. We're going to place down an end rod here, and we're going to go then go up from the end rod one two, three, and four uh, iron bars up. And I think this one's a little too high, so we're going to go ahead and bring that down a notch. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and go four iron bars up. Uh, we then want to go ahead and build a block off the side of this first iron bar. And we're going to go ahead and place down an end rod on the bottom of it so it should sit on top of that fence gate and look something like that. We then want to take a green carpet and we're going to place down a green carpet here on top of this smoker like so. Now for the Dishka machine gun for itself, we're going to need an anvil a polished black stone slab, a end rod, a chain, and then a wither skeleton skull, as well as a green choker box, a powered rail, a zombie head, and a polished black stone button for the time being. We're going to place down the anvil here on top of the stair. We're going to go ahead and then go forward from that with a top slab of polished black stone, a end rod, a chain, and then a wither skeleton skull. We're also going to place down the choker box come off the side of the um, anvil to this side here. And we're going to go ahead and place down a powered rail on top of that. We're also going to place down a zombie head on top of the anvil, as well as a polished blackstone button on top of this polished blackstone top slab. Now on the side there of that um, top slab there, we are going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood sign. Just like that on the side. Now moving to the other side of the uh, vehicle, we're going to go ahead and place down an item frame on the side here with a black bed. And we're going to rotate that so it's facing forward like so. Now, at this point, uh, we can go ahead and also place down a dark oak wood sign here if you're on Java. If you're not, then obviously just leave the item frame. And then coming off the side of that, we're going to go ahead and place down a grindstone. Now, again, for Java players, we can do a little bit of extra detail here on the grindstone by placing down an item frame. And in that item frame, we're going to go ahead and throw in a red apple for like a little red um, optics or something like that on that, um, that turret. So it will look something like that. And the very last thing here, again, kind of uh, more of a Java-based um, feature here, but it's going to be, we're going to place down a block here for temporary. We're going to place down a lever on the side of this block. We'll go ahead and grab our debug stick here, 
and doing a very similar technique we did to the levers there on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and left click this till we get selected facing, rotate this around so it comes off the back of the anvil, and then we're going to go ahead and left click it again till we get selected powered false, and then right click it and it will face downwards like so. Um, so that right there is just going to form the back of our gun, and that's really all we need to do for that. Anyways though, that is going to basically wrap up everything we have here for this tutorial, just try to make sure I'm not missing anything, and everything does appear to be good to go, so we're going to go ahead and call that good here for the T-80 BVM main battle tank. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this design, if you do end up putting it to use, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be anything from a sign that built me to my channel or this video if this does appear any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on and overall enjoy the build. Um, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Owen Bross for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.